I'm Dr. Johnson Chung, and today we're going to be talking about episodic vertigo. When most people think about vertigo, they usually think about a condition called BPPV, where if you turn in a certain direction or if you lay down, you get the spins for a few seconds, and then that makes you feel a little bit off balance, and then you recover, but you know that generally if you move in one specific direction, that that's where it's going to stimulate your vertigo attacks. For people with episodic vertigo, the attacks can actually come randomly and seemingly out of nowhere, which makes it a little bit more distressing because you don't know when the next attack is going to come. The most important causes of episodic vertigo are going to be vestibular migraine and Meniere's disease. Now, it's important to know the difference between these two because one is mainly a brain central nervous system disorder, while the other is a disorder of the inner ear. When people think about vestibular migraines, they usually think of a migraine headache, but they have the second symptom of vertigo. But there's enough of a migraine population that only has the vertigo attacks and not necessarily the headaches. With vestibular migraine, you'll have random attacks of really bad spinning vertigo, and in between these attacks, you will actually feel really off balance, really disequilibriated, and you'll also have something called visual dependency, which means you are very sensitive to visual motion, meaning if you go to a movie, if you go to a grocery store, if you're sitting in a car, then that visual motion can actually make you feel quite a bit off balance and may actually trigger a vertigo attack. Meniere's disease, on the other hand, is a disorder of the inner ear, and with Meniere's disease, you can also get these random attacks of vertigo, but typically with Meniere's disease, you're also going to get intense auditory symptoms, meaning you may feel a pressure or fullness inside of the ear, you may hear roaring or the ringing sounds of tinnitus, and many people with Meniere's disease will actually go on to have a little bit of hearing loss or profound hearing loss in some cases. Both conditions look very similar because they both have random attacks of vertigo. The way that you could differentiate them is that Meniere's disease in particular, you're going to have signs of low frequency hearing loss and the roaring and some of the oral fullness can actually linger beyond the confines of the attack. Where vestibular migraine, you may have tinnitus and you may have some auditory symptoms, but after the attack is over, in the in-between period, you may not have uh, some of those auditory symptoms. The reason to know the difference between these two is because the treatments for them are going to be quite different. A patient with vestibular migraine may be quite responsive towards migraine treatments, including migraine medications, some of the newer generation monoclonal antibody treatments, and patients with vestibular migraine do show some signs that vagus nerve stimulation can actually help improve their condition. Patients with Meniere's disease may be responsive towards a low-sodium diet, but one of the things that does seem to be effective for Meniere's disease, at least in our experience, is upper cervical chiropractic does tend to make a big difference for these types of patients.